Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about data flow in Max. So concepts like direct acyclic graph, right to left order, depth first search, stack and stack overflow. These concepts are quite useful if you are if you want to be a Max programmer because you're going to understand how Max works behind the scenes and uh, when you when you patch uh, something it's important to understand how Max is going to process the e events and the messages and um, connected to, and, and and generally uh, the object connected to each other. So first of all, um, let me say that Max event processing is sequential. It so that means that it can do only one thing at a certain time and if it does in multiple if it does multiple tasks they occur in a specific order. If one object is connected to multiple other objects they have to happen sequentially one after the other. The way Max works um, follows a theoretical model that in computer science takes the name of graph. A graph is a set of nodes and edges, and a set of nodes actually connected by edges. So in Max, the nodes are the objects and the edges are the patch cords. This takes the name of direct graph because the edge goes from one node to the other, therefore from, one, from the outlet of an object to the inlet of another object. The signal flow must go in one way, it can have any loop. There is a special graph called direct acyclic graph or DAG, which performs topological sorting. And uh, in the field of computer science, a topological sort, sometimes abbreviated as top sort, or topological ordering of direct graph is a linear ordering of its vertices such that for every direct edge uv from vertex u to vertex v, u comes before v in the ordering. So Max makes an ordered sequence of action in a patch. It makes a linear sequence, a linear ordering of the vertices. Every time you add or remove an object, it performs a topological sort. Um, in the max environment, events are messages, which are the kind of data that flow through three patch cables. Events are asynchronous, which means they come intermittently. Audio instead is signal and so is continuous. Um, so they always get the next bit of signal according to the sample rate. But we're going to talk about audio uh, processing in later videos. The programs that handle messages in an object are called methods, terms used in object-oriented programming. A method performs action in response to the message and when the action is complete, the method returns, which means that the procedure has finished doing its job. So it can either store or update an information in the object or output it through its outlet. So. Let's let's uh, prove um, in Max what I'm what I just said. Um, and to do that, I have to start with the concept of right to left order. So that means that if you have to uh, trigger multiple um, messages uh, at once, they are gonna not gonna happen uh, simultaneously, but they are gonna follow an order. So in the this is the easiest um, example so and uh, that you can you know uh, do in max and uh, what I want to do is basically uh, trigger two messages let's say a and B and I'm gonna connect these two objects uh, I mean the, the trigger object to the left inlet of the two message boxes and then I'm gonna connect just uh, a print uh, object. Good. Let's ignore these warnings. And so what I'm gonna expect according to what I said is that Max is gonna output to the Max console first B and then A. So and let's verify it. If I click here in the trigger, 
on the trigger, I'm going to have B and A. And if I inverse the, the order of the two messages, now um, the, first, uh, go, the first message is going to the output is going to be A and then B, as you can see here. Now it's A and then B. Good. So this is, as I said, this is the, the easiest case you can have in Max. But what happens if you have multiple objects triggered at once um, in a patch? So um, what do we need to do? Uh, let me just um, copy uh, a patch I did already because it's kind of uh, long to reproduce. And it's this one. So this is called basically um, first depth first search, and this is the way Max try to order um, messages. And if we, and, and this patch basically uh, connects uh, connect um, messages uh, in an order that we want to uh, have. And another case. Let's consider this, this, this patch here. So these two are quite similar, but the thing is that here we can control um, the order of messages. Here as well, but the order is going to depend of the, on the position of the messages in the patch. So what do you think is going to happen here? So this is going to be my uh, main trigger. So let's say C. Um, between quotes is going to be, um, let's say, the main trigger. And what you're going to expect, according to what I said just before, is that Max is going to process from right to left, but also it needs to it needs to do um, the the depth for search. So what it what it does is to like trigger uh, the first object going following like all the the, 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 the three the, the three of connection the three of connections and once um, the connection uh, goes to the end and there is nothing left it goes back to the let's say next event the, the event after uh, proceeding in an order from right to left. So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to trigger this um, this C message and the C is connected to B and D. So first is going to, Max is going to process B, but B it goes, yes, to, to the print option, but it has before a name message. So what's going to happen is that once I, uh, after I trigger this message, uh, Max it will not output directly C because he knows that has something on the right uh, side, uh, which is B. But B cannot get output uh, before A goes to the print. So the other is going to be A, then B, then C. And now there, we don't have any more left in the, let's say, right, si uh, right side of the patch. So uh, C is going to trigger D. And then, um, which has a priority to the E message. So the last message is going to be E, right? Uh, let's prove that. Let me clear the Max console. And... I'm going to click trigger this object. So as you can see, the order is exactly A, B, C, D, E. Now, if I just invert all these objects kind of randomly, the order is going to be completely different now because it's going to like try to do a, another topological sort and, uh, and saying, okay, yeah, th th this object stays here, so it should keep, has a priority according to, to another object and, and so on. So we don't want to always uh, um, uh, pay attention on, on how we um, place the object in a, a max patch. And in order to do that, we have to control the data flow uh, by using this uh, message called trigger, which I'm going to explain uh, in the next video. But for now, um, just consider that this trigger object outputs um, a sequence of messages um, in the order from um, right to left. So if I trigger one here, he knows that it has to go to 
of this object and this object. So it's going to uh, output, uh, in this case, one, but it has also a uh, trigger, eight, six, uh, eight, eight, seven, and six. And uh, this, uh, so the first output is going to um, be this one. Uh, but as you know already, we have to as well um, give, I mean, Max is going to give the priority to this other trigger because it stays on the right um, um, side, um, and the, which has the priority uh, respect to this object here. And, the, and same thing for the trigger three and two. So the order is going to be one, and then we have this message that goes until the end of the chain. And the end of the chain, like the first message uh, after the one, is going to be two, then three, because this is the, the, the second outlet. Um, I mean, this is the first outlet, but considering the order, this is the second. Um, and then it's going to go up to four, and then five. And then, okay, yeah, this this chain here is finished. There's, let me go up to the, um, the beginning where we have six. Okay, the chain is complete. Now let's go to seven. Seven, uh, seven doesn't have any other message, so it goes straight to the output, uh, sorry, to the print uh, object, and then we have eight. Eight can go straight to here, but it's also connected to another object, which is trigger 10 and nine. So... Once it's connected here, it's going to go to the output is going to be 9 and then 10. And then since 10 is also connected to this other object, it's going to output 11 and then 12. So as you can uh, imagine now, uh, the output is going to be something like this, like a perfectly ordered mm, messages. Um, so the thing is that... but is that that you might wonder that uh, how max knows which is the order because uh, because as i said it goes to the end of the chain then it goes back to the beginning of the chain so some somehow max needs to keep a map track uh, keep track of 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 all these uh, numbers all of this data so it needs to like assign some um, some memory space to each um action and uh, this process uh, in computer science is called stack now i don't want to go too much in depth uh, this topic but a stack basically is, is like um you uh, you can think of a stack as a, um, a stack of plates so every time you add let's say uh, an object uh, you create an object you connect it um and it gets triggered um, the object goes to a stack, um, so which is a place in memory uh, that's that where where the value is stored and uh, in a kind of in an ordered way. So let's say we want to process first this message. Um, so let's say we have a message that uh, it doesn't doesn't have to go first to the output. So it, say, it says, okay, just put C on the <clears throat> bottom of the stack. Then let's say we have another message, uh, for example, B, and but it cannot go to the output right now so let's save it to this uh, stack and put it here and then we have the last message which is for example a and we put it in the stack so once everything is ready to be processed max is gonna take the first element from the top of the stack so it's gonna say okay ah yeah okay so i kept in memory this this value okay i'm gonna output oh so what's what's the next value i need to take um from the stack okay yeah it's b so let's output b and and so on with c and uh, if we, we had um other messages other data stored it's gonna go um further until it finishes uh, until there is nothing less left in the um, in the stack in, in memory um so this the, the stack concept explains why uh, max can keep track of all of these messages and can order the, the output of the messages both here and and here and also in the this very easy patch uh, i shown you here and um, 
of course, when we talk about stack, we have to consider um, this stack overflow. Stack overflow is um, can be intended as an um, infinity loop, um, which means that if an object is connected to another and uh, and the output goes to the inlet of the object that triggered this the other object, we have a kind of infinite loop because they get um, triggered by each other, and uh, that which means that Max is gonna Max is gonna start to uh, let's say put uh, these these messages in uh, in the stack because he knows that after one event he needs to give the priority to the to the to the, to, to the previous event and so on, but since it's a loop, this is gonna go for forever. And um, but the, the problem is that Max has a, a finite um, um, size of m amount of memory. So after a certain uh, times of trials, um, or or better say, to after it it stores this this um, the, the data into the stack, it the, the just the, the memory runs out, and uh, Max needs to stop this process and needs to um, let the user know that. Uh, it cannot uh, continue performing uh, to perform what it was doing, and uh, it needs to stop. It has to stop this process. But let me let me show what I'm I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, so let's, for instance, consider like uh, two um, banks. And we're going to do each other. So this is like a normal behavior, right? So we click one bank and uh, it outputs another bank. It outputs a bank and which triggers another bank. Well, what happens if I just connect the output to the first inlet? So we're going to start you know, uh, saying, okay, this bank goes here, but before I output this, I have to output this, uh, which output this, and, you know, and, and so on. Um, I can also prove how many times... Um, Max needs to uh, iterate through this process until it says, "Okay, that I have enough. Uh, I'm done with that. I don't want to. I cannot uh, continue performing this action anymore." And um, yeah, so let me trigger this. Boom. Okay. So first thing that we are gonna notice is that a message is gonna appear here. On the top, saying number, which is like the 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 object um, that is uh, that in encounter this problem, stack overflow uh, outlets are disabled until this message is cleared, and we can see that um, the it tried like more or less fifty two thousand times to. Uh, save this this uh, this data, uh, but then it stopped. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, see you on the next Monday where I'm gonna talk about how to control a data flow. Uh, so things like triggers and other super useful objects. Bye.